Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild a caliper. In this case it's going to be the front caliper on this Sika XS400 that I'm working on here. This process however should apply to pretty much any caliper, they're all really much the same. Some have two pistons, some have one like this one. Either way you just replace more or less seals depending on how many pistons it has. A uh, quick safety note before we begin, um, seeing as we will be working in around brake fluid, you should always have a pair of mechanics gloves on, in this case nitrile, so that the brake fluid doesn't eat through it. Um, brake fluid is what's called hydrophilic, so it will absorb very quickly into your skin and that's not particularly healthy. Uh, also of note, as you should probably know by now, brake fluid also eats paint, so try not to splash on anything that you're interested in keeping looking good. So the first step in this case is to remove the two mounting bolts that hold the caliper onto the bike. There we are, so your caliper, main brake line here comes from the master cylinder. I can actually see fluid around mine that's been leaking out, which is a telltale sign. Also, sometimes you see dribbles down the disc showing you it's wet, or your tire will be wet with brake fluid at the end of the day, or after it's been sitting. So the next step is to remove the two brake pads so that we can get to the cylinder right in here, which is this shiny piece here that slides in and out and squeezes the brake pads against the disc. So these are all different. Each one is held in by either a spring clip, some ride on pins. Um, in the case of this XS400, I have an Allen head bolt here that I remove and it lets the pads come out. Either way, if you're not sure, you're going to have to look it up in a service manual for your bike or an online form of some case. But they both do need to come out before you can continue. So as you can see we now have both brake pads out and I've exposed your piston here and I don't know how, you probably can't see it but it's, it's all wet with brake fluid. So the next step is you're going to need to get a container such as this old yogurt container here or any other catch tray. Because what we're going to do is we're going to pump the brake handle to push out the cylinder. Now, if you already have your caliper off your bike and it's not hooked up, or you're missing your master cylinder, or you're replacing that too, or what have you, you can do one of two things. You can either hook a grease gun up to your bleeder, and plug off the uh, banjo bolt fitting here, or you can leave the bleeder in and hook up an airline to this orifice here once you have the bolt out, and blow it out with compressed air. Um, if you do do that, make sure you have something here, like a rag or something, because with compressed air, once these let loose, they will fire across your garage, you can get hurt. Not good. So, just gonna pump the uh, master cylinder, and you can see it slowly working its way out. You have a rag handy because it's going to spray once it does come out. In fact, I'm going to get a slightly bigger catch can here just in case. Yeah, so this is more of the setup that you want. You've got a nice big container, you've got your brake caliper sitting in it, so when it does start to leak, you catch everything. So now I'll just continue on and hopefully pop this thing out. So this is what I use to blow it out with. You can see it has a, it's just your regular air chuck, but it's got a uh, rubber tip on it, which lets me just push it into the hydraulic fitting off of the caliper here, it makes a good seal, and then it just blows out the uh, cylinder, which slides out right here. And inside it, here's your bore, you can see there's one of the two seals. In this case, it's the outer one, which in my case is the lipped seal. And inside it, there's also a square o-ring, which you need to pop out. In my case, I'm just going to use a small flathead screwdriver to pop it out. There we are. 
So at this point, what you want to do is you want to get some scotch right in there and you want to clean the bore, make it as shiny and clean as you possibly can before you put your new seals and piston into it. Small item of note, when you're cleaning it out, you'll also want to clean out the two grooves the o-rings sit in so that they make a good seal. Mine are somewhat corroded and full of junk, so again, I'm just going to get a bit of scotch bright here, in this case it's a pad, and go in there and clean all the grooves inside out. Also, while you have your caliper off and you're cleaning it up, it's also a good time to separate the slide from the piston, so you just slide apart like this. Clean all the old grease off these slides and put on a uh, good, proper synthetic brake grease. Don't use anything else, don't use petroleum grease, don't use anything else you have laying in your garage. It's very important that you use proper synthetic brake grease. Otherwise it could stiffen up, it'll, it could melt from heat. It's, and this is not something you want to screw around with. Use the right stuff here, people. So before we continue here, just a good time to show you what comes in your brake caliper rebuild kit. You should have, in this case, because it's a single cylinder, you'll have your one new cylinder as well as two new seals. One's a hydraulic seal and one's a dust seal. You want to pay attention when you take a caliper apart which seal goes where. In my case, they're two very different looking seals. One's much thicker than the other one. I don't know if you can tell or not. This one's a lot thicker than this one. This one's also a double-lipped seal, which makes it different from this bigger flat O-ring. Another thing of note is these are usually coated in an anti-corrosion spray or chemical of some kind. You'll want to give it a clean off with some brake clean before you go to put it back into your caliper. So once you have your caliper all cleaned out to a point that you're happy with, um, and you've rinsed it all out with brake clean, you don't want to use any other solvent because brake clean doesn't leave any kind of film residue behind. You, again, you want to use the correct stuff here, so use brake clean. It's time to uh, put your seals back in. So in my case, the uh, large thick black one goes in the back recess, so you just pop that in. It might take a little time to work it in there and get it where you want it to be. But this is not a spot to be rushing, as you want to make sure that it's in there correctly. You want to make sure not to use any uh, tools or sharp objects to put the seals in, because you don't want to damage your nice new seals. They should be perfect surfaces. Now in this case, my outer seal, the dust seal, the smaller one of my two, has one edge, in this case it's on the inner edge that's lipped. You want to make sure that is the side that the piston will be riding on. It is possible that it could be inside out. In which case you can see the lipped edge would be outside, which is not what you want. You want the lipped edge in. And again, just pop it into the recess, take your time, get it in there. Alright, and in it goes. So at this point, you want to take a little bit of new brake fluid, get a little bit on one of your fingers, and you want to use the brake fluid to lubricate your new O-rings, new seals. Just put a film on them. You also want to do the same thing with your new piston, which you have cleaned off previously using brake clean. So you put a film of brake fluid all the way around it. Just help slide it in. So now, take your cylinder, caliper housing, and slide it in straight down. You want to make sure that it goes in straight. You don't want it to cock to either side or bind. You place it in there. And you just want to get it started. So with your thumbs, you're going to push evenly just until it pops in to the first. You'll feel it pop in past the dust seal and then probably seat right there. So at this point, you're going to get a socket that will slide inside your piston, like so. You're going to get a C-clamp. You're going to tighten the C-clamp. like this. The idea is just to slowly use the C-clamp to push in your new cylinder, sorry, your new piston. A little at a time, go easy, 
You don't want it to cock to either side and get stuck. Should note also here, when you're doing this, you do want a uh, socket that fills the inside of your piston as much as possible that won't slide to side to side. That way you get an even pressure down and you don't cock it and get it stuck. Should you get it stuck in there, you'll have to use some compressed air again or something else and back it off a little bit to get it unstuck. So you just keep turning it around. I had to get a bigger socket to fit. Mine cocked a little bit, tilted and got stuck. I put a bigger socket in that even the pressure out and away I go. So there you go. Piston all the way recessed. Take your C-clamp off. Socket out. And there it is in there. Shiny new and hopefully without leaks. So, on the slides, the caliper, I got some synthetic brake grease here. Again, very important that you use the correct grease. I'm just going to get a small little bit on my finger. You don't need much, just a little bit. And you just want to film. No point in gooping it on here, because the excess you have to clean up. It's a thin film on both slides. That's all you need. That much. You can barely see it. It's a thin haze you want on there. Then all you gotta do, line these up with their dust boots and slide them back inside. Shouldn't take too much pressure or effort. Should just pop right back in. There we go. Slide back and forth nice and easy now, just as they should. That's also another thing to check if you're having brake issues, such as your brake not returning after you release the uh, brake handle. It's not always necessarily the piston that's stuck, it could also be your slide that's sticking. So you, it's a good idea to take it apart and grease it when you have the caliper off anyways. That saves you from having to take the whole thing apart again and it takes an extra, as you saw, six seconds to take it apart, clean it, and grease it. And now it should be good to go for, hopefully, a number of more miles. Another small tip while we're here. Um, on the bando fittings of brake parts, there are copper crush washers. Um, ideally, every time you take the caliper bolt out, you want to change these washers. I've had good luck reusing them once or twice. In my case, they're brand new. I only put them on here once, but a week ago when I got the new master cylinder in before I knew that the caliper was leaking. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse them. When you snug these down tight, but of course not too tight, just snug. Check for leaks. If they don't leak, good. If they do, go out and buy a new pair. They're about, I don't know, maybe 10 cents a piece. So this isn't really somewhere you want to cheap out. It's a handy thing to have a few of these on hand. When I go out and buy them, I buy about 10 of them. That way, whenever I need them, I just change them out. It's a small point. 